Also want to share with you that if we have any uh, connectivity issues or, or power issues, you can find more information about our program on our website. Just Google CVGS for Central Virginia Governor's School, or you can go to that YouTube channel and you find that by going to CVGS Director. That's our YouTube channel, CVGS Director. Now, I recommend you go there anyway, because there's some pretty entertaining videos at CVGS Director. So um, if you have time, please do that. Uh, before we get started into our presentation, I want to do a quick Zoom poll, and I'd like you all to please respond if you can. I'm going to relaunch this poll, and it says, uh, how much knowledge uh, do I have about CVGS? And if you please select one of these answers, this is multiple choice. I know very little. I know some basic information. I know a fair amount. I know a great deal. So if you would just choose for yourselves how much you know about the program, that's going to give us an idea um, related to the amount of detail we're going to share tonight. And all answers are going to be just fine. You know, if you know very little, you're going to learn a lot tonight. And if you know a great deal, you're still going to learn some new things because we're a dynamic program. We change from year to year. All right, I'm going to let uh, just a couple more seconds go before I share the results of the poll with you. So we have just a few more people um, if they'd like to respond. We're gonna end polling and here are your results. Do you all see the results from the poll? Fantastic, very good. So, um, you know, that's actually a normal distribution and now I wanna teach stats, but I'm not going to. I really want to, but I'm not, I'm gonna resist. We're gonna move on. I'm gonna share, uh, share my screen and share a presentation with you. And thank you, Dr. Mr. Douglas, for continuing to let people in from the waiting room. So would you please give me a thumbs up if you see the Governor's School facility right now? Fantastic, so that's going well. I'm gonna start my presentation. So this is our facility. We are located on the site of Heritage High School, although we do have our own facility. It's only five years old and it is fabulous. And if you apply and are selected, this is where you would be if you were coming to the governor's school. Here's our plan for this evening's presentation. I'm gonna provide an overview. Mr. Steele will discuss physics and our junior year capstone. Mrs. Shamit will discuss research and internships. Mrs. Shiflett and Mr. Howard will discuss mathematics. The Doctors Douglas, now that's just a lot of fun to say. So we have two faculty members who are married. Both of them have earned their doctoral degrees. So the Doctors Douglas will discuss the senior science courses and the senior seminar course, which includes our senior year capstone. Our three ambassadors, uh, who I've already mentioned, will share their thoughts and then we'll have question and answer time at the end. And this will take about an hour. So I answered the where question. We still need to answer who, why, when, what, and how. So the first who, that's me. Again, I'm Dr. Stephen Smith. I'm the director and one of the seven instructors. I've been at the Governor's School for 11 years. And I have to tell you, uh, it is a fabulous job. It is so much fun working with these faculty members and with these students. I have the privilege to teach statistics to all the juniors. I teach one of the senior math courses. It's called Connections in Mathematics, and you'll hear more about that later. And I teach a technology lab called Leadership, Teamwork, and Communications. And I mention that specifically because you're going to hear about leadership, teamwork, and communications throughout our presentation this evening. So we've talked about the where and one of the who's. Now we're going to talk about why. Why does the governor's school exist? And it exists to serve our students. And here you see the class photo for the class of 2020. These students just graduated. They've gone on to college. Now you might notice that's a bit of an odd class photo. Typically, we have all the students get together in our commons area for the photo. But uh, as you know, uh, with the pandemic, uh, we weren't able to do that last spring. And so we have a Zoom window. We thought that was uh, appropriate because their courses were taught uh, via Zoom. I will mention that our presentation is really about our program pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. So we're gonna talk about the way our program is designed to be provided. We're not gonna talk a lot about how we're providing the program during the pandemic. However, I will say this, 
because we have laptops with all our students, uh, we have a one-to-one -one initiative, because we uh, only have about 150 students, we were able to pivot to a fully online model just the very day that the governor closed the on-site instruction for other schools. And so we didn't miss any instruction last spring. And then we put some things in place, some extra supports in place for our incoming students over the summer. Uh, this fall, we started on August 4th with our hybrid model and we've used hybrid or fully online this year. So we have real time synchronous instruction with our students every day. And uh, if you have questions about our reopening plan or how we operate during the pandemic, you can find the answers in our plan that is on our website, or you can ask some questions at the end of this presentation. But let me get back to the main presentation. Why does the governor's school exist? Well, in 1985, the five superintendents from Amherst, Appomattox, Bedford, Campbell, and Lynchburg got together because they saw a need for a program, a regional program that would serve highly talented, highly motivated students who were interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, what we call the STEM fields. And so they created this regional program. And they wrote a mission statement for the program that I think captures a lot of the essence of why we exist. So here's the first sentence of our mission. The CVGS mission is to be a dynamic educational community exploring the connections between math, science, and technology. And when we say dynamic, we, we think about two things. One, um, the faculty here is very dynamic in their teaching. They're very passionate about their content and they get the students engaged in dynamic ways. And two, we're dynamic because our program's always changing. It needs to change to meet the students' needs. And so we'll have different tech labs, we'll have different courses offered, and you're gonna hear more about that later on. We're an educational community. And when we say that, what we mean is our students are excited to get to know each other and to work together. And they work together collaboratively rather than competitively. Uh, we explore the connections between math, science, and technology. What we mean by that is we don't teach facts and algorithms in isolation. We teach these ideas in relationship to one another. The second part of our mission is to develop leaders who possess the research and technical skills, the global perspective, and the vision needed to address the challenges of a rapidly changing society. And so I wanna note that leadership is a key part of what we do. You're gonna hear more about that. Um, I also wanna note that we are gonna focus on research in the junior year and technology in the senior year. When we talk about global, global perspective, there's really two things there. The first is we want students who can think beyond their home, their community, their commonwealth, even their country. And we also want students who can put problems into perspective. So they need to be able to look at a unique problem and think about it in relationship and in context to other things that they know. And then finally, when we talk about vision, we want our students not only to have the vision to see what is, but have the vision to see what might be. They need to be able to handle new problems that they've never seen before. Um, because we know that our society is rapidly changing and the challenges we have now are very different than the challenges we had 10 years ago or even two years ago. And so our students need to be flexible, creative problem solvers. And we're gonna talk about how we help them develop those skills throughout this presentation. So that's why CVGS exists, but there are two more why questions I wanna answer. The first is why apply? Why should you apply to the governor's school? I'm gonna give you three reasons to apply. The first, it's good for you. It's good practice. You're gonna to apply to go to college and the CVGS application is like a mini college application. So it's good practice for you to do it now. The second, there's no cost to apply. And finally, the application is non-binding. And what that means is, if you are selected, you don't have to come. You can still make that choice. So there's really nothing risked when you apply, but there's a lot you could gain. You could gain a lot of opportunity. So those are three reasons why you should apply. Now let's talk about why you might want to attend. I'm gonna give you 10 things to think about related to why you might want to attend. The first is the other students. 
These are fantastic students, and we have three fantastic representatives of our students tonight. They're bright, they're enthusiastic, they're like you in that they enjoy math and science, and they come from all across the region. You'll be able to study in a college environment, and, it, and it's more than that. I think our ambassadors will share with you what our environment is like and how it's different than a typical school. You'll learn how to conduct college level research, and Mrs. Shamit will talk about that. You'll complete a 36 hour internship. She'll mention that as well. And you'll learn how to use the software provided on a CVGS laptop. And these laptops are considerably more powerful than the devices you might have in a typical school. I'll give you a few more reasons. We'll help you learn how to study, retain, and recall rigorous content more effectively. Many of our students come to us and they've never truly been challenged. They've earned straight A's, but they haven't really had to learn the kinds of study skills that are gonna benefit them when they go to college. You'll learn how to use advanced technologies. Again, we'll talk about communication, presentation, teamwork, and leadership. And we're gonna prepare you for acceptance to the most competitive colleges and universities. We send students to Randolph, to Liberty, to uh, William and Mary, to the University of Lynchburg, to Virginia Tech, to UVA, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, MIT, you name it. Our students go there and when they touch base with us by email, they say, I'm as well prepared or more well prepared than any of the students here. And finally, this preparation for success, it's gonna be in high school, it's gonna be in college, but it's gonna go beyond that. We're gonna teach you skills that will last a lifetime. So that's 10 reasons why you might want to attend. Now I'm gonna go over just very quickly, a little of the general what and how and then you'll learn more about that from the other faculty members. Again, we've been around since 1985. We serve those five school divisions I've mentioned. There are set numbers of allocated slots. So in Amherst, for example, they select eight juniors each year, and then those juniors go on to be eight seniors the following year. So they have eight slots for juniors, eight for seniors. Appomattox is four and four, Bedford 22 and 22, Campbell 14 and 14, and Lynchburg 21 and 21. And these slots are determined uh, by an arrangement between the sending uh, school board and the governing board of the governor's school. Currently, we have 138 students who uh, attend from 10 different high schools. I really like that our number is uh, lower than um, 150 because we can get to know each student individually. Additionally, uh, students are selected by division committees. We at the Governor's School have nothing to do with the selection process. We can tell you a little bit about it, but it does differ from one division to another. Our students attend for three periods each morning and then they go back to their base schools. All our courses are weighted at 5.0 for your grade point average, and that's in recognition of how rigorous the work is, and that's true for all our school divisions. We do not charge students for any costs related to the program. And you're gonna hear about that if your research uh, has costs associated with it, if you need to buy equipment or supplies, if you go on trips, all of that's covered by the program or by our foundation. And finally, your school division will provide transportation to the governor's school for you. So with that, that concludes my part of the presentation. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Steele to, um, share his presentation. Mr. Steele. Good evening, everybody. And I'm very excited to be able to speak to you tonight. Um, can you all see my title slide there that says program overview? Wonderful. So I will be teaching physics to our juniors next year. So I'll be talking tonight primarily about the junior physics courses. Just for your reference, a few of the other things that I do around the building is um, I'm involved in our senior fall project in three of our senior seminar labs that Dr. Douglas will talk about later tonight. And I'm also behind the scenes helping with the IT support. Our students have the one-to-one -one initiative with the laptops and other technology needs, and I do my part to help out there as best as I can. So let's talk a little bit about physics at the Governor School and what it would look like and also what it, how it may differ from a physics offering in your base school. So the first thing is that all juniors will enroll in a year-long physics course. We teach it at an accelerated rate through inquiry and investigation, and I'll address that accelerated rate a little bit later on. It is an algebra trigonometry-based course, so we do sprinkle some calculus concepts in there, but we don't have the expectation or requirement that a student should have completed nor be enrolled in calculus at the same time. 
We do plenty of activities. Learning should be active. We have the wherewithal and the space and this class size to make our learning interactive with hands-on activities, labs on a fairly weekly basis, projects, computer simulations, and more. As Dr. Smith mentioned, as all of our courses are, the physics course is a 5.0 GPA weighted course. However, the junior physics class is not duly enrolled, okay? Now we do, as I mentioned, we emphasize that application of knowledge. So a lot of times a learner coming into physics is going to feel like there's a lot of formulas to remember. And there can be a lot of relationships, I would rather say than formulas. But we allow the student to have a formula sheet, if you will, that they can produce with whatever they feel is necessary to get them through an assessment. And the key is, is being able to apply that knowledge, not just be able to recall what formula and perhaps do a little bit of magical algebra to it to make it all work out. It's about the application, it's about the process to get to that point. There's a strong emphasis on that, not only through the evaluations and the tests, but also in the labs that we'll talk about in a little bit. Also, the unique thing about physics at the governor's school, or one of the other unique things, is that this is required of all of our juniors. Physics is not a required course in the Virginia high school curriculum. It is an optional science. So students typically take a three-year matriculation through science in the base school, earth science probably in eighth grade, onto biology, onto chemistry, and then beyond there, the science courses that they pursue are optional. So you may have students going through a high school program without getting physics, but the rigor of physics and the critical thinking skills that you get demonstrate to colleges your ability to be successful in a college level course and the value of the physics, whether or not it will be directly applicable to a further major or career is practically immeasurable. So as I mentioned, a lot of inquiry-based learning, we pose questions, we answer those questions and we do it with state-of-the-art equipment. In fact, our junior physics lab this year will be having almost a complete overhaul of the equipment that we're going to have. So we will have state-of-the-art equipment. It connects directly to the laptops that the students have and the ability to repeat, to gather data and determine the outcomes that we're trying to demonstrate is we're able to get it done easily in a 50 minute time frame. So I mentioned the rigor of the course and I mentioned the curriculum that we cover and I'm not gonna list off all the topics to you here, but first semester basically, is a study in mechanics, while second semester is a study in electricity and magnetism. And this is one way that our course, again, stands apart from other high school offerings in physics. Most of the physics offerings from our base schools are either AP Physics 1 or AP Physics C, which essentially is just a study in mechanics, what you see in the first semester there. Not only are we providing the level of rigor, we're working at that accelerated pace that I mentioned, and so we were able to get into the electricity and magnetism, these second semester ideas that you see here, and we're able to give the students the complete breadth of what physics is to prepare them as they continue their journey through science. This would be more representative, this curriculum here, of what you would see in a typical first year college algebra trigonometry based physics course. So by us being able to get those second semester topics complete. Now, as mentioned, we have that active laboratory environment, and I'd, I'd like you to just really pay notice in these pictures and the coming ones that the students are engaged. As you look around, everybody's involved, everybody is active. We're able to have small group settings. You won't ever find a group larger than four. You'll see groups of three around as well, because we have the wherewithal, as I mentioned, to be able to equip our lab the way that we want learning to happen. So students are hands-on, students are interactive, students are engaged. And each student is an active contributor into their group as they work towards solving the types of problems that we may face them. So I say problems, and one thing that I like to do in a physics course is I like to let the questions leap off of the page, literally. So sometimes the questions may be a question that I pose that the students have to entirely develop a uh, procedure to answer um, and determine what data to collect and how to analyze the data. So really emphasizing our higher order critical thinking skills. Sometimes what I like to do is take a problem from the textbook and ask them to predict the answer based on the information given in a textbook and then replicate 
that same problem in a laboratory setting and take data and repeat the process to verify that what we are pulling off of our magical formula sheets and from thin air as it may seem with our physics magic, we can actually show it to be true in a physics setting. So very active, very engaged. That leads to creative problem solving. Like I said, when the students have to create their own procedure, when the students have to answer a question that either I just simply pose or they pose themselves, that's going to lead to a great engagement that's gonna involve teamwork and communication. And again, you'll notice these group sizes. We've got groups of two in the back, three. Small groups, high level of interaction with the students, engagement in the material that leads to the success that we like to see them have. Now you may have noticed that these pictures may look a little dated. I'm not just referring to perhaps some of the clothing choices or hairstyles, but rather nobody was social distanced and nobody was wearing a mask. So those pictures were two years old. This is what lab has looked like this year. So I put this in here just to demonstrate to you that even though we are schooling in a pandemic, as Dr. Smith mentioned, we pivoted last year to the online model when uh, the schools were closed by the governor. And we picked up on time at the beginning of this year with, in all of our science classes, regular laboratory work where the students can still get their hands on the equipment and still perform meaningful science by gathering data and drawing conclusions from the data. And again, through our foundation, what we are able to do is we are able to, as you see, literally provide every student for whatever our lab may be, their own set of lab equipment in class where they can be working and answering that to be able to engage with the equipment, engage in the curriculum, and maintain social distancing and safe health procedures in our pandemic time. So that's something that we're especially proud of here at the Governor's School. Now, I do like to do projects. I do like to have that, again, the learning be more than just a, a, the rote process that you might expect from a textbook. So we do engage in a variety of projects through the year to make those connections into the real world. We do have two highlights that are some of our larger projects for the junior year. The fall highlight is the egg drop, where our students design some sort of container that can survive a drop of about 30 feet and make that impact. And we do some analysis of the impact after the fact. So that's quite the event. And then as well in the spring, we do a culminating project, which is a unity with the mathematics students and the physics students. Of course, all students take both, but just the two ideas coming together and having a singular goal with students working in group as a junior capstone level. What exactly we do will vary from year to year as we find emerging technologies, but in the last years, it has been a project involving robotics. So as you see with the egg drop project, the students are definitely looking forward to it, maybe a little bit of level of stress as they're packing everything in, but it ends up being a fun day for all. We hope for good weather when we go outside. We usually are lucky with that, and the students can expect to see if their eggs survived, and usually we're able to crown a winner at the end of the day, if you will, for those who met the project requirements the best. So that's what I have for you. And at this point, I'm going to toss it over to Mrs. Shamit, who will be talking to you about our junior research course. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Steele. And just making sure everyone can see my PowerPoint screen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, there's always have to make sure. You never know when those technical glitches might happen. So thank you. All right, so I'm Mrs. Shamit, and I am the lead research teacher. I am not the only um, faculty member who teaches research, the doctors Douglas also do, but I help kind of coordinate us all so we're all on track and, and all following um, our own curriculum um, that's unique to the governor's school. I also work with uh, the internship program and help to work on placing all of our juniors into their internship and get to go out into the community and meet mentors and go visit students on site when they are at their internships and I also help manage our social media. Okay so why research? All right so research is we consider it a marquee course for us. It has been in existence since the beginning of Governor's School so over 35 years of effectiveness and the beauty of the small size of our program is that over those 35 years, we've been able to change and evolve research to meet the needs of our students. 
we can envelop new technologies, we can meet new uh, challenges and interact with more people from the community and local universities. And the goal is really to focus on the process of science. I tell students multiple times, I really don't care if your hypothesis is right or wrong. That's not the point. The point is to learn how to do science. And that's really what we focus on throughout the year. And because we can adapt our program so uniquely to our students, and we focus on the process itself, that's really how, what makes our research program unique. Even though some other research programs may exist in the region, ours is definitely a unique experience. And part of that is also because it's student driven. Students get to choose their topic. We wanna make sure they're doing something they enjoy and something that will be meaningful to them so that when they talk about it, they have a sense of pride and accomplishment about their research. And it's, it's a lot more meaningful when it's their own topic. So that's part of the trouble with research though, is how do you pick a topic, right? Many of our students are, are really interested in so many things. So early on, we have students kind of identify some major areas that they might be interested in, and we pair them with a faculty member who will serve as their on-site research mentor. And we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings early in the year. Another benefit of our small size is that we can actually have one-on-one -on -one meetings multiple times early on to help um, drive that research question. You know, it's a year long research project in their junior year. We're not gonna be solving world problems. We're gonna be able to answer a smaller question. And so being able to work with students to come to a question that's doable within a few months and able to um, find a way to answer that question. So working one-on-one -on -one with the mentor, we help students develop a good question, a hypothesis, and the methodology behind that. So that involves getting into a lot of existing literature maybe meeting and interacting with mentors off-site. We are able to work with professors at local universities. We can also reach out to other people in the community who have access to equipment that we may not have at CDGS. And that's another um, unique aspect is we have a lot of relationships with businesses and um, professionals in the community um, who know, oh, they need help with research, I'm here um, because we, we have some really good resources. And whether it's something we need to purchase for students or whether there's a cost involved with preparation for research or when we are presenting at the end, all costs are covered by the foundation as Dr. Smith mentioned um, when we began. So this is a no cost activity for students and another benefit of our program. And we do prepare for competitions. So, because communication is a key piece of research. If you can't share your research and tie it into the broader scientific community, it loses some meaning. So we really want students to be able to do that tying in. And we do that by preparing a PowerPoint, by writing a paper, and also doing a poster. So they learn three different ways to communicate their science effectively. And so here we can see some pictures of students in action. Um, this top left image, this is actually at the University of Virginia Fly Lab, where a student went up to learn how to take care of fruit flies from an expert um, who's been working with our program for many years. And our wonderful new facilities allow us plenty of lab space and wonderful facilities for conducting plenty of research on site. But again, we can always reach out to some of our wonderful community members um, who assist with mentoring some of our student projects as well. And then one of the highlights in the non-COVID times um, is being able to actually go and present at symposia where students get to interact and hear research from other students as well. Um, and this is image um, in the lower left is a couple years ago at the Virginia Junior Academy of Sciences. So it's a multiple day trip. Um, again, the all costs involved with the lodging and submissions and meals, all of that is covered by the foundation. And it's a lot of it's a nice culminating event for students um, who reach that point um, in competition. So internships is also a major component of the research course. And you may ask, well, how are those really connected? Well, one, it fits really nicely into the research spring schedule. So Fridays are typically um, in 
open three hour time block in the fall for students to be able to have research time. Just and it's it's wonderful for those who need lab time or to be able to work off site with mentors. And in the spring, when they're done collecting data, we transition that three hour time block on Fridays to the internships. So at the beginning of the year, we survey students to find out what their interests are, and then we can pair them with a mentor in the community. So whether their interest is engineering or medicine or dentistry um, or physics, we can find a mentor who has some sort of um, connection to that field to pair a student with. And sometimes there are two or three students assigned to a single mentor or a single location. Centra takes on many interns. Well, I can imagine you have to have a lot of healthcare interests. Um, but this allows students to interact and learn about professions, to see how professionals work in a community. They may have an idea of what an engineer does, but then when they go on site, they realize how much more is involved um, or how different that, that can be. So they learn content, but also how to interact in a professional environment. And this can help them decide on future career directions and also as they think about college applications. Oops, apologize, hit one too much. Um, so in summary, research focuses on student-driven hands-on research, that's key. No cost to students. We focus on the process of research. And through that, they become better problem solvers because it's never straightforward from A to Z. They become better science writers and communicators and we have them do research and internships in their junior year so that they have more material to discuss and more knowledge when they're applying for college. Being able to discuss their research project or their internship opportunities really is beneficial when they start those college applications because they have a story to tell. Um, so research is a lot of fun. I enjoy teaching it. I learn with students along the way um, and I think it's a really beneficial course. You're gonna hear from the um, ambassadors a little bit about their research experience too when they speak later today. But at this point, my time is up. I need to pass this off to the math department um, and specifically Mrs. Shiflett, who will be next. Hello, everybody. I am Melissa Shiflett. I am a part of the mathematics department here. And let me just make sure my screen shares correctly. Everyone see our front screen? Perfect. Um, so like I said, I am Melissa Shiflett. I uh, have the opportunity and um, really the pleasure to teach all of our juniors math this year. And um, I, I love the fact that our program is small enough that I can get to know every single student really well. I have the opportunity to work with them um, and help them and get them through that transition from coming from a typical high school to into our rigorous high school that we have. Uh, I also get to work with our seniors in the senior tech labs. Uh, I specifically facilitate a scientific photography lab where students get to work on taking high-speed photography pictures like capturing a balloon being popped or a splash of water. I also am the school bookkeeper. I take care of our student database and our student portal system. And I'm also the CVCC liaison. So I work with the community college to make sure that all of our courses that are dual enrolled um, have all the students are enrolled correctly, that their grades go through and that their transcripts work out the way that we want them to. So the mathematics department here at CVGS is made up of myself, uh, Mr. Howard, and also our director, Dr. Steve Smith, who teaches one of our math courses as well. So uh, we have several different types of courses that we offer here, and several of them are ones that you won't find in a typical high school. Um, we do separate our juniors and our seniors, um, and we'll talk about kind of reasoning in just a moment. Um, but for our juniors, we offer either a math analysis course or a calculus course, and these are more dependent on what courses they took prior to coming to Gov School. Um, and we try to help them make good decisions about what's the best course to take. Um, the interesting thing is our math analysis course, which is also like a pre-calculus course, um, is a little bit different, or I would actually say a lot different than a typical math analysis course you would find. Um, we go a little bit deeper, we go through a little bit more material, and we really get the students ready for that next step if they're going into calculus. So for that reason, we actually have a, a good number of students who opt to take our math analysis course, even though they took a similar course the year before. Um, and all the students that opt to do that find that it's really helpful in building that foundation and giving them the tools and the knowledge they need to be successful in future math courses. 
Um, our Calculus One course for juniors is actually a little bit more than just Calculus One. We cover a full semester of college calculus plus half of a semester of Calculus Two. Um, and then we look at our senior courses that we have, and you'll notice that we have several courses listed, uh, Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3, and then a course at the bottom that we're particularly proud of. Um, this is our Connections and Mathematics course, and we actually created that here at Governor School, but I am going to hand this off to the actual creator, who is Mr. Howard, because I think he can do it a little bit more justice. Thanks, Mrs. Schiffler. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, nice to be with everyone. My name is Steve Howard. Uh, this is my 31st year at the Governor's School, and I'm also the parent of a CBGS alum. Um, during my time here, I've taught uh, a variety of mathematics courses and computer science courses. Um, I've also taught a variety of senior seminar labs or tech labs, as we call them. Um, and to go back to what Dr. Smith said earlier about, you know, being a dynamic uh, community, you know, some of the tech labs that I've taught have come and gone. Their, their, their time had, was, was well spent and now they have moved on. And so currently I teach uh, video production and apps for uh, or mo mobile apps or the two tech labs that I have currently. Um, some of my other <clears throat> duties, I am half of the IT department. And so we are responsible for uh, all the computers, both hardware and software uh, at the Governor's School. And we're also uh, responsible for the connectivity for our local network, whether it's wireless or servers or hardwired things or any type of communication. And then mm -hmm. we are very lucky um, to be able to um, be with Lynchburg City Schools as they allow us to tap into their fiber. So if ever any of our information uh, or data need to sort of, you know, come in and out of the building, then we ride on Lynchburg City Schools wires and they handle all of that for us. And so we are very grateful to them for that. Um, the courses that you see uh, on the screen now, um, I've actually taught every single one of them somewhere during my tenure. Um, the, the thing that I want to sort of uh, point out to you guys, though, is when you're a senior, you actually get uh, more choice than when you're a junior. Uh, and so those courses, I want you to think of them as semester courses. Calculus 1 is a semester course, Calc 2 is a semester, and Calc 3 is a semester course. Even Connections in Mathematics is a semester course. There's a fall semester and a spring semester, and there are different topics during those semesters. And so we'll talk a little bit about, uh, about sort of how those courses work, but let me talk really uh, quickly about the Connections in Mathematics course, which is a course, as Mrs. Schiffler said, that was developed here at the Governor's School. And once again, I'm going to apologize to all of my, my faculty friends because they've heard me say this over and over. I'm going to pull out my soapbox and hop on it. Um, the reason Connections was uh, created was because um, one of my pet peeves is we in education have decided that um, we want our people to learn that Algebra 1, Algebra 2, the trig, the geometry, uh, the, the functions, all of that race so you can go take calculus as soon as possible. And that... Um, I think is, is not the best use of our time uh, because calculus is an introductory course. It's not an ending course. It's an introduction to real analysis. And so that's why Connections exists because Connections is a course uh, that uh, shows our students the breadth and beauty of mathematics. And we let them um, experience some mathematics topics that typical high school students uh, don't get a chance to see. Uh, because mathematics is a very broad and beautiful discipline. We actually like to say that it's the language of the sciences around here, but I digress. Um, <clears throat> I've heard other folks uh, mention that uh, this idea of problem solving, and I think that's the best thing that we do here at the Governor's School, is we teach our students and give them opportunities to be good problem solvers, and that can be uh, cross-curricular, but can also be inside a particular course or a particular topic. Um, and so that's, uh, that's number one. And Mrs. Schiffler, if you'll go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, and so what we do in the mathematics courses is, is we put equal, equal emphasis on theory, uh, um, analytical skills, or you know, how to do technique uh, and applications. Because the idea is you need to understand what you're doing but you also then need to know how to do it. 
And so they're very important, but then we need to go ahead and have them problem solve with the tools that they now have. And so that's the application part. Um, there's a reason also why the schedules for the juniors and the seniors are, are, are different. Um, so when you're a senior, you're gonna have uh, three days and we meet for 50 minutes. If you took these uh, courses on a college campus, that'd be the same thing. They would meet three times a week uh, for 50 minutes. So what does that allow to happen? Well, since we're not meeting every single day, we don't have homework due every day of the week as you move through. All of a sudden, now we get to put into play some of those time management skills. Uh, we'll give a week's worth of homework or a couple of weeks of homework or even more. And then it's up to the student to plan their time to be ready for whatever type of discussion or assessment that may be coming up. And so it gives them an opportunity to practice and develop those time management skills um, that they can use when they move away and they don't have quite as many people like mom and dad looking over their shoulder helping them. Um, we like to also align with the science courses. So sometimes topics uh, up, appear together. Uh, like if you're doing something in physics and maybe something in, in mathematics will show up at the same time. And that's great. Um, but I think it's really cool that both the juniors and the seniors have this culminating experience where you take uh, the ideas, you, you take uh, your, your abilities uh, to problem solve and you take the science and you take the mathematics and you put them together in an ill-structured setting, and then they get to actually interact and use those and problem solve outside of a particular topic in a classroom, but actually put it all together. Uh, and I think that's really cool uh, that we get to do that here with their, um, with their students. Um, I think at this time, I'll throw it back to uh, Mrs. Shiflett and she'll tell you a little more about our courses. All right, hi guys again. And uh, I'm gonna talk about how our courses are different than what you would expect to see at your base school. Um, like I mentioned, I love that our program is small enough that I get to know all of my students and I get to build relationships with them. Um, even this year during the pandemic, I've had more opportunities to be able to meet one-on-one -on -one with students to help them through the time management skills, prepare them for tests, um, and just to kind of help them even with college planning for our seniors. Um, one conversation in uh, particular stands out to me because I was talking to a student who remembered sitting in this very meeting last year and heard me saying that our courses are more difficult and rigorous than what you would expect to see at your base school. And he said, I remember sitting there thinking, oh no, it can't be that much harder. It can't be much that much better. They're just saying that to make their program look really good. And he said, you know what? It was true. These are definitely a lot more rigorous and they have prepared me a lot more. So that is one of the things that I love about our courses is we're able, um, with the students that we have, because they're very motivated and ready to go, and because the time we have, we're able to cover more material and we're able to go um, more in depth into that material. So we can um, expand upon what a typical course would uh, have throughout the year. Um, we also demonstrate the rigors of college courses. We're not just preparing them for college, we're putting them in a college situation, um, but with the benefit of a safety net because we're there alongside them to help them go through and feel confident as they're going through these courses. So our students will go to college prepared for the rigors that you'll expect to see at four-year universities. Um, we do a lot with technology. You've seen some of the graphs that um, students create during their senior years uh, using our GeoGebra uh, software. We have an accelerated pace. We're going to be moving more quickly through material. Um, it's not going to be the same topic over and over again with worksheets of problems and problems. We give them just enough for them to practice and feel confident, um, but we also put a lot of um, expectation on students to know, hey, I need to practice more myself or I'm ready to move on. Um, and then you've heard us talk a lot about collaborative projects because they're really important at our school. Um, when you bring students from 10 different schools, they don't always know each other. And so we want them to be able to work with each other, meet new people and develop skills that they don't have. And so we put a lot of collaborative projects, especially in the junior year where they're able to work together. And they might be projects where they are learning new material together, or maybe they're expanding upon material that they have learned, or maybe they're starting to apply it and see how that mathematics goes outside of just the uh, classroom that we have. 
Um, and so that brings us to the end of our mathematic conversation. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a great program that we have and I'm excited to hear some more. So I'm gonna hand this off to our Dr. Douglas to talk about our senior sciences. All right, hello everyone. Um, as uh, Ms. Shiflett just mentioned, I'm Dr. Douglas. This is actually my 10th year at the Governor School. I serve as the assistant director and I also am the dual enrollment physics instructor and one of the senior seminar instructors as well. And I am the other Dr. Douglas. Um, I also am going to be one of the senior science instructors. I'm also responsible for um, creating the curriculum for new student orientation. So when you get accepted to Governor School and you attend, you're first going to experience that in June and you'll go through a lot of different things and activities with us um, and I am the coordinator for that. Um, I am also going to be the anatomy and physiology instructor. I am also the safety um, officer for the governor's school and I am responsible for um, research projects as well. So I focus on microbiology as well as chemistry and plant projects specifically. So when you come to the Governor's School and you made it to your senior year, you're gonna have two different options of sciences to take. So as you can see here, here are our two different options. We have our physics and we have our human anatomy and physiology. As you can see, both of which are gonna be duly enrolled through CDCC and you can see the course numbers that are offered there. Both of them are going to be four credits per semester. So at the end of the year, you will have eight credits in your science course, either physics or anatomy and physiology, and both are lab-based. Um, we have the labs for once a week for each of the different subjects in there. And you have the choice of either a physical science, which is gonna be our senior level physics, or a biological science, which is our human anatomy and physiology. The purpose of both of these courses is to really prepare the students for college level science work. So while we're doing that, and our, that is our goal, both of the courses are gonna really integrate those STEM concepts. So we're gonna look at making sure that the math, the engineering and the technology concepts are all gonna be integrated within our content. And they're gonna learn specific skills throughout the year that will allow them to really be competitive and work well in a competitive university later on. Dr. Douglas will talk a little bit about how his physics course is gonna prepare them for those competitive schools. Yeah, so as a senior, you have an option for which science you wanna take. If you take the dual enrollment physics class, that is a senior level science class that includes topics that go beyond your typical high school topics. We do things like fluid mechanics, heat and thermodynamics, light and nuclear physics, and also quantum theory. Students will be able to incorporate calculus and vector analysis to explore concepts along the way. And in both of our classes, they're gonna develop these critical thinking skills and problem solving skills and continue to develop that because that's one of the things that I think we do a really great job of because a lot of these skills are transferable. So when they go to those competitive colleges and universities, they will be very competitive and very, um, uh, very prepared. Topics are further explored through inquiry-based laboratories and engineering applications. We also focus on data analysis and have a lot of project-based assignments. Students also will be able to do computational and programming applications using Python. And we also look at the analysis of physics research. So you can tell it's a very rigorous program. We have high standards for our students, but they will be very well prepared. And we help them along the way. It sounds a little intimidating, but we are uh, collaborative. And so our students, do, they work together. They're not just competing against each other. We're actually happy to help one another. Um, and so, we also have an extended lab time on Tuesday. So you actually get the benefit of just like a normal college environment, you have extended lab periods as well, okay? So in a and um, I take approach that I think education, especially in my class, is kind of a holistic sort of thing. I think content is super important. So it's really important for your health and medical professionals to really know the parts of the body. But while they're doing that, I really want the students to learn other technologies along the way. So it's very research oriented. We make sure that we're still diving into the research to make sure that what we're reading about in the textbook is current with what scientific literature says. Um, and we integrate technologies along the way. And I teach the students to learn how to learn. So I will tell them that there are certain technologies that they're gonna to have to learn, and then they will tell me what they're going to do in order to learn how to do it. And they have to learn how to teach themselves to do those sort of things. I support them, of course, along the way, but it gives them that ability to not have someone looking over their shoulder, teaching them a technique, and they know how to successfully do that and have the self-confidence to do so. Those labs that we have, again, they're hands-on. We use lots of, um, sophisticated technology that allows us to 
take different measurements for different probes for different sensors for the body. So the students learn how to use these different types of sensors. And then we take it a step further where now the students have to ask their own research questions. They have to design their own labs, collect their own data, and then use these large data sets that they are then gonna ana um, analyze throughout. So it's very big on working with and collaborating with their teammates to make sure that everyone is understanding as you go along because they're gonna be in that nice community. The culture at the school is very different from other schools in that we are all out to help each other. And that's a big thing that we focus on here, that you are not competing with your neighbor. You are there to all help each other because you're all trying to work together to make one final project that's gonna be look make everyone look great. So you all need to work together to do that. The three hour lab time is really one of those things that mimics that college environment. We have three days of lecture a week, and then we have this block time that you have where you're allowed to have real labs. I call them real labs because you can time to really go in there and collect data and do repeated trials of it because you're not in a small um, time structure with it. And that also gives an unstructured time during that time where they're only collecting data for maybe two hours. They'll have an hour where they're going to maybe analyze that data, maybe work on a homework assignment that's going to come up that is unstructured by the teacher and the students learn how to use that time um, on their own. And Dr. Douglas will talk a little bit about the senior seminar. Sure will. Uh, the senior seminar class, I think, is one of the um, most fun classes. They're all fun classes. Who am I kidding? But no, it's a great example of the dynamic learning community that we keep talking about. Um, the senior technology lab course is unique to CVGS. It allows students to investigate fields and technology not found in a traditional school setting. Um, students actually complete a preference form. They actually do a survey at the beginning and they actually select what they are interested in, what tech labs they wanna pursue because every six weeks it changes and they actually rotate through the ones that they want to do. And now we offer a lot more opportunities than the students can actually take. So they're only gonna be able to take a certain number of them uh, prior to um, you know the end of the year but they get to choose which ones they wanna do. So if you're not interested in the biological sciences, you can do a lot of the engineering or the other cool ones. And there's a bunch of great creative ones. And you're gonna see some of those technology labs here in just a, a bit. But students learn the technology, the research applications, collaborate with one another, and oftentimes have an independent project at the end. You heard a lot of our uh, faculty members already mentioned which tech labs they do. Um, and so you work with different uh, faculty members throughout you know, because we all have, you know, maybe two or three different tech labs. Um, so the experience is very different based on the tech lab you choose. All right. And so at the beginning of the senior seminar, the first six weeks, everybody does an engineering project. And that's where the students actually begin their journey by forming a group and being part of a team and basically creating a small company. And then you do research and you have to accomplish some goal. Exactly what that goal is and what that senior seminar experience looks like can change from year to year because it's dynamic. Um, and it's also a lot of fun and it gives uh, students the opportunity to work together, to collaborate, to help them work with their communication skills, which you've heard that theme over and over, and also develop leadership skills, skills that will help them throughout their senior year. All right. And so some of the technology labs that we have offered, now these are technology labs that we currently have offered. And so I'm not gonna say that these are definitely gonna be around when you're a senior, because as some of the other folks have already mentioned, like Mr. Howard mentioned, a lot of the tech labs have come and gone in the time that he's been here. Some of the tech labs that I started off with have come and gone. We're constantly changing and updating our technology labs based on not just the interests of the students, but also what does the cutting edge technology look like? Uh, for instance, over here on the right side, I get to uh, do laser cutting and the 3D design and print. Um, my newest one is actually virtual reality, which has been uh, very popular. That's recently developed. And students can actually go in and look at the different educational benefits and also the practical applications for training purposes and also for business marketing and other things. So all of these things have a practical application in our society and also help students develop those um, inquiry-based opportunities that we keep talking about. Because a lot of these will have an independent project at the end where students are um, allowed to investigate um, whatever options they wanna go into. And so a lot of these will change as you'll see. All right. So the technology labs are really 
my favorite part, though I love a and and research, this is really my favorite part because I think of it as getting to play with really expensive toys that Gov the Gov School actually picked up the tab for. So when I look at this, for instance, I do microscopy. Microscopy includes our scanning electron microscope. Our scanning electron microscope, when it was first purchased, retailed at, you know, a quarter of a million dollars or so. So it is a really high end microscope that we get to use here. And the students don't just learn the theory behind it. The students are the ones that are using it. So as you can see here, here is a student loading her sample. They prep their own samples. They load their own samples. They take their own pictures. But one of the things they may do is they may work collaboratively with the people from Photoshop because scanning electron microscope pictures come in black and white. And so they can colorize them with the help of a partner who's doing Photoshop. Um, I also run microbiology. Microbiology um, for the senior year tech lab focuses more on food microbiology because I really like food. So they learn, yes, to handle bacteria and fungus safely, but then we create things like cheese or kimchi and learn the fermentation process. Um, I also run biotechnology and biotechnology um, has been a tech lab for a very long time, but what I do every year in biotechnology basically changes on whatever the students come in already knowing. So if they've already know how to do something, we're not gonna do that particular lab. So it's whatever cool labs I find out there that I'm like, ooh, that's neat. And I have the freedom to actually get new things because the foundation is really what's supporting this for us. So we really get a lot more opportunities that traditional schools aren't gonna have because we have that foundation that's willing to spend this type of money on it. And then the culminating at the end of the year after the tech labs is going to be the seniors capstone project. This is also another really cool um, project that they have. We call it the senior science scenario. And what we do with this is we basically take the all the seniors and we are going to put them into groups and these groups are going to have people that come from the different sciences and people are going to take on different roles within this project so we'll give them some sort of scenario that they're going to have to research and then they'll have um, the opportunity to as a group kind of tailor what they would like to actually research and create through the process this senior science scenario also changes each year based on um, what the environment's like and what we would like to focus on and what the newest things are. Last year, um, since we had COVID that came in, that took a part of um, the senior science scenario. And I imagine this year, there will be some aspect of that that's going to be included with it as well, though it's probably gonna be different than the previous year. So it's a really nice way of taking all the skills that the students have learned through their junior year with their research and expanding that and um, able to do that in their senior year while they're gonna take the things that they learned in their math courses, as well as in their two different science courses. And they're gonna be able to put all that together into this beautiful project that really blows my mind every year when the students do it. It is really amazing what they come up with. And that is what we do during our senior year. All right, so I think that wraps up the senior sciences and the Dr. Douglas presentation. And I appreciate everyone that's still here with us. We had like one hour to try to get as much together for the faculty, and we all want to keep talking because we're super excited about what we do. I didn't even get a chance to talk about the student activities and all the fun things we also get to do, but it's very cool to be here, to be a Griffin, and I'd like to also just mention that when you come here and you're a Griffin, everything we do that's Gov School time, it's during Gov School time, so we do not infringe on the time at your base school. So if you're in sports or work or anything like that, um, that's fine. You can still come to governor school and still participate in all your base school things. Just wanted to throw that out there. And at this time, I would like to actually, um, I'm going to let Mel Melanie introduce herself. She's our first senior ambassador and guest speaker tonight. Um, so Melanie, when you're ready, please go ahead and begin. Hi, my name is Melanie Bowling, and I'm a senior here at CVGS and at Brookville High School. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what my research project looked like. Um, so my research was titled The Effect of Incentives on Students' Performance Level and Motivation. And mine was a human participant project. And I know this year it probably looked a little bit different. But when I was doing my research, I actually got to go into a local elementary school and recruit students. And it was really great because I really learned that I love working with kids. And that's something I want to keep pursuing as I go into my further education. 
And with my project, I actually won the behavioral and social sciences category at the regional science fair. And I was able to participate in the state science fair as well, which was a really neat experience. And it was something that I was really glad to be a part of. Um, the research experience not only taught me how to conduct my own research, but peer reviewing was a big part of it. And that's something that I still use today. If I have like a, um, a essay that I want somebody to read or just something that I want a different perspective on, I'll send it to one of my friends that I met in research um, because we do a lot of different interactions with other students from different schools. So you really get to meet everyone that you're in class with. And um, I'll be like, hey, can you read this for me and see what you think? And they'll send back feedback or it's just a really great way to get a different set of eyes on what you're the work you're producing. So research was really beneficial and it's something that I've talked about in interviews. Um, it's a big part of uh, the science and um, everything that I want to pursue. So I really enjoyed research and it was a really great experience. All right, thank you so much, Melanie. I appreciate you sharing your research experience. Um, I think next up we have our ambassador, Drew Flint. So Drew, if you're ready, uh, you can take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Drew Flint, and I am a student at EC Glass High School and the Governor's School. So at the Governor's School, we have this phrase, which is a community of learners. And I actually don't think anyone's already said that tonight, so I'm kind of happy to introduce that. But basically, it encompasses our culture here at the Governor's School. So everyone really loves to learn and to share their knowledge with other students. And I think the most unique and arguably the best part about this is that anytime you're in a classroom with someone, you know, you can point around the room and find someone that knows what they're talking about or and can help you through maybe what you're not quite understanding. And this was, I think, one of the biggest changes for me when I came to the governor's school is, you know, there's always someone that I can call up or shoot a text or just reach out to and they're going to help me and um, as I figure out what I need to do. And I think this really definitely leads to um, many different collaborations. So, and the program here at the Governor's School, which they've already mentioned, encourages this collaboration. So I remember in my junior physics and math analysis classes, we would have labs or group projects, you know, every other week or every week. And every time we would be paired with different people, just kind of as a way to get to know everyone. And I think the most memorable part about this for me was I think I kind of had this expectation of, you know, you're used to kind of carrying your group at your base school, but when you come here, everyone really tries and everyone puts their best foot forward and you can achieve so much together. And then I think a similar thing this year with my uh, computer science class and my calculus, you know, we have labs uh, in class and but we're able to work together and brainstorm ideas. And I think this is really important for the governor's school because um, the governor's school teaches, like Ms. Shiflett said, you know, it's a lot of complicated and complex material. And so I think having a group that you can uh, contact and you can reach out to and then share ideas with is really important. And I think it makes this very uh, special. And so I think this really leads to, you know, a culture that's designed around cooperation and collaboration, not uh, as much competition. And that was probably one of my biz biggest misconceptions two years ago was I thought the governor's school was so competitive and you, you know, everything was competitive. There was so much tension and it was kind of a toxic environment. And, but I think I found, you know, after going here for about one and a half years is that it's really focused on working together. And I've had so many fun moments just working with my peers. And I think um, this design around collaboration is really smart because you know, when you go off in the real world, you're going to have to work with uh, different people who you may not know. And I think the governor's school really sets you up to uh, succeed. All right, um, thank you so much, Drew. I appreciate it. Uh, our third and final guest speaker, Alicia Mays. Uh, so Alicia, when you're ready to go, uh, you can go ahead and take it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alicia Mays. I'm a student of Heritage and CBGS. So I know we touched on some of the class classes and how they operated, but there are three really big points that I want to touch. 
So application over memory, that's how the CVGS classes are operated. We have math, science, and technology, and they all focus on application over memory because we want our students to have a better understanding, not just basic memorizing. We want our students to understand what they're doing and work with each other and see if they can come up with new ideas, which moving on into working with each other, I know Drew talked a lot about this, but we at the Governor's School love collaboration. Even in this virtual environment, they actually set up Zooms for you. I find myself emailing my teachers all the time and seeing, and seeing if they have scheduled times that they can meet with me. I, Pretty much what I wanted to really touch on was application over memory because we want our students to understand what they're doing and solve. And then collaboration because we want our students to work well with one another and then making sure that they reach out with their teachers and co communicate with them because asking questions is extremely important. Thank you. So uh, would you all please give our students a round of applause with your electronic reactions? You can find that in your Zoom menu at the bottom of your screen. So um, that's, we're at about 8.08. We're a little bit um, farther along uh, than um, in time than I had planned, but I do want to leave time for some question and answer. So um, do we have any questions at this point from anyone? And you can put your question in the chat or you can unmute if you'd like. All right, and that's okay, mate. Wait, there it is. I love it. The first question, Stephanie, thank you so much. The first question, and we always talk to our students about being brave and not being afraid to uh, to ask their question. So the question in the chat is, what is our first step to apply? Excellent question. You want to talk to your guidance counselor. So the applications are handled at each individual base school. Talk to your guidance counselor and they will get the information you need to you. Um, do you need to know what career you want to do when you go to the Gov school? No, you do not. You, you were in high school. You don't have to know that at all. Don't let anybody tell you you need to know that yet. That being said, um, we're going to help you with the internship. You're going to get to take a look at some careers and see what you think. Um, so no worries there at all. Take your time. Uh, explore a lot of things and figure out what it is you want to do. When is the application due? That varies by high school also, um, but it probably um, it's going to be due in mid to late February. Um, if not, awesome, thank you so much, that's great. If you are accepted, when will you know? We send letters out um, typically at the end of March, right before spring break. Um, you've mentioned capstone. Do the students end up with a capstone diploma? Thank you so much for that question because that might be what we call a close confuser. When we say capstone, what we mean is a culminating activity that really brings together uh, the knowledge and skills that you developed over time. So we have a capstone uh, for junior year and for senior year, but they're unrelated to the diploma option. Great question, thank you. Dr. Trent, Smith? Yes. Uh, one of the questions was, if not initially accepted, is there a waiting list? That's a great question and the answer is yes. Yes, there is a waiting list. And um, there will be some students who um, will be selected and for whatever reason, perhaps they're moving, uh, some other reason they might not accept selection. And then we would move down the waiting list to other students. Thank you so much, Mr. Howard, for that. Um, there is transportation provided by each school division. And so that would be, again, something once you're selected, we provide more information about that in the new student orientation that Dr. Mrs. Douglas coordinates. Do the projects impact college applications? Uh, just curious whether the students pick project topics based on interest only or tailor them to the next school they hope to attend. I'm going to say some of each, right, because you're going to have some unique opportunities here and you might choose to talk about them in your application essays. Yeah, so some of each, it really depends on what your interest is. Can you clarify again who makes the acceptance decisions? Yes, I can. There is a division committee for each school division. We have nothing to do with it. 
Um, so when you complete your application, um, some school divisions like Amherst and Appomattox have one high school. Some, well, one of them has four high schools, right? And that's Campbell County. So um, those applications all go to a central committee and they make the selection decisions. These are really good questions. And I want to um, thank the brave individual who chatted the first one. That was Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Any other questions? Well, let me tell you this. If you end up with another question, you can email me your question and I will get right back to you. And what you can do is you can put in the subject line of your email, prospective student. I get back to those right away. You can find my email address on our website. Just Google CVGS and go to the faculty and staff section. Any other questions before we wrap up? We are going to post this video uh, on YouTube. We want to thank everyone for attending. Um, collect data from multiple sources. If you want to find out more about the Gov School, ask someone who currently attends the Gov School that goes to your high school or ask a teacher. Uh, if you have a teacher that's been at your school for a number of years, they're going to know about the Gov School. So collect information from multiple sources. Thank you so much for being here. The last thing, um, do you know of any specific things they're looking for in our applications? I do. They're looking for a demonstrated academic ability and an interest in math, science, and technology. Those are two things you can be pretty sure they're going to look for. Um, thank you all so much for coming. I appreciate you. Have a great evening. Uh, thanks to the faculty. Thanks to our student ambassadors. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. You are so welcome.